Tom Cosm here. I'm going to be showing you a technique today for creating interesting bass lines that are really grungy, really glitchy, using an interesting technique which is all about resampling a sound that you've synthesized or you've created yourself octaves above what you originally want it to be, and then taking the resampled version and using Ableton's kind of algorithms and stretching algorithms in, in ways they're not really supposed to be used to get a really grungy kind of effect and it works really well for 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 kind of Reese type bass lines kind of anything that has kind of a uh, a bit of distortion to it if you want um, so I've just got a simple drum and bass loop here on an audio track pretty simple I'm going to rename this drums just to keep things nice and neat and I'm going to create a new MIDI track we can do this by going create insert MIDI track or the um, shortcut is command shift T so now we have a MIDI track, I'll call this bass, and I'm going to select an area which is uh, four bars long, and we can create a MIDI clip, which gives us a MIDI clip which is completely blank. If I double click it, you'll see the MIDI editor down here. There's no notes whatsoever. Now, because this is a MIDI track, it means it's got to, it has to send information to something, to a machine, to a device, to a synthesizer, and I'm going to be using the operator here. So under my browser area here, if I go to my instruments, I'm going to be using operator. Now operator is Ableton Live's most powerful synthesizer. Um, it's kind of the the, the, the go-to synth, I would say. Um, so what it gives us here is it gives us four oscillators. Now these are all set up in a frequency modulated array at the moment, which means each oscillator modulates the frequency of the next one. Um, you can have it so that they all get mixed together, so you can have four separate oscillators, four separate waveforms all playing and mixing together, but I'm going to leave it on the FM one for now. Now if we go down to A, the A oscillator, here you'll notice it's a nice smooth sine wave. We can pick different sine waves, saw waves and, and whatnot, but now for now we're just, just going to use a sine. Very simple. Just, just using a sine wave while we write the notes for our bass line. Now, one thing I, I usually do is I usually write my bass line, the notes of how it's going to be. I usually actually write them an octave higher anyway, just because my brain can pick up higher notes a bit, bit better. So if I'm going, say, like this, just adding in random notes here and play that, it's not bad, but if I bring them down to the sub kind of area, the low area, so I just selected all of the notes and held down shift and push the down arrow to go down two octaves pushed it twice you can still hear you can still hear it there I just find it a bit easier to work a couple of octaves higher until I get the, the notes how I want them and then I can bring them down two octaves to where they should be so let's just roll with that that was sounding pretty cool let's bring this back here So that'll do for now. It's pretty, pretty, pretty simple. I'm going to select all the notes. Command A. Let's go down one octave. See how that sounds. Let's change the, um, the shape of the waveform here just to something uh, like a saw wave that has a lot more harmonics, a lot more sharpness to it. Now we've got a filter here, so remember a filter cuts off frequencies at a certain uh, a certain range uh, based in hertz or kilohertz. If you start going up higher into the thousands, kilohertz just means it's um, a thousand um, times whatever the number is rather than normal hertz. So. <laughs> And with the filter, of course, we can give it an envelope, um, an envelope meaning 
a set of instructions on how each individual note or how a parameter works over each individual note. So by turning up the envelope amount, each time a note plays, it's going to follow this pattern of this line here. So we've got our attack, which is how long, um, how long it takes for the um, this parameter, because this it's it's assigned to this frequency parameter. So the attack says how long it takes to get up to this point here, which is of course the peak point, and then we've got our decay which comes down, we've got a sustain here, which is how long or at what level this frequency sustains at, and then we've got our release, so that's when the note releases what happens after the release, and this doesn't really matter because we have no release on our actual uh, envelope, well we have a little release but we can get rid of that, um, we don't have any release on our actual amplitude or volume of the uh, operator, so the release here doesn't really really matter, so if I have my attack kind of open a bit like this, and of course for the filter, um, if we look at the filter shape here, you can see if I move my frequency around, uh, it's only going to be letting frequencies that are inside this range here, so you see if I bring it down, it's just letting through the lower end. Um, we also have a resonance which amplifies the point of the cutoff, which is really good. It gives it that kind of wet sound. Now, if we go back to the envelope here of our filter, let's say we don't want any attack. We don't want that kind of opening up sound. Now we can play with the decay, so it starts at its completely open position and then decays down. And we'll bring the frequency all the way down and see what happens. Let's bring, bring this all an octave down again, so I'm going to go Command A, hold the Shift key and push down. Not bad. Now, just for now, I'm going to get rid of the filter. And I'm going to change the waveform back to a sine wave again of that first operator. So now we've just we've got a really pure sub. Let's get a spectrum just so we can see that. A spectrum, you can place it after anything and it will show you the actual frequency range. So you can see it's just kind of only playing one particular frequency each time the notes play. If I change it back to a saw, you can see all these harmonics opening up and that's what gives, gives it its timbre, its sound. But we're gonna just choose a sine wave. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to frequency modulate this particular waveform with this oscillator. So frequency modulation, just quickly again, what it does is it changes the pitch up and down really, 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 really fast. And the rate that it moves the pitch up and down is relative to whatever the frequency is of the original operator. So one way we could do that, let me just play a wave, uh, a simple note for you here. That's a C. Now if I turn the LFO on, which is the low frequency oscillator, you'll see the destination, it's being sent to A, B, C and D, which is A, B, C and D, each one of these oscillators. So that's going to change the pitch, so this LFO, suddenly I've turned it on and it's going to slowly move the pitch up and down as I bring the amount up. And the more I give it, the faster it goes. I mean the uh, more intense it goes or I guess you could say more wide. If I bring the rate up, that's how fast it goes. And you see as I start getting really fast, it, it, it starts almost producing its own kind of tone. Now this is set on low mode, so the maximum it can go is this 127. But if I put it into high mode, we can get it going really fast. And that's where you start hearing a whole new note, a whole new tone, and this, this is kind of the concept of how frequency modulation works. So let's bring this right up really fast. So remember, that's, that's just this waveform, 
wobbling up and down with lots of pitch. So that's using the LFO to change the pitch of this oscillator. But because we've got this array here, which means um, oscillator B can frequency modulate A, C modulates B, and D modulates C, it means that if I have a sine wave here and I slowly bring it up, it's doing the same thing as the LFO, but it's doing it at exactly the same frequency because um, this is playing the same frequency as this, but instead of actually playing the tone, it's modulating the uh, frequency of this one. And I can go up the harmonic series here. If I want to break the rules and not actually use a, a, a mathematical, um, a mathematically correct uh, ratio of how fast this frequency modulates this, I can turn it into fixed mode and I can choose the frequency myself. And the level is basically the same as changing the amount on the LFO and the frequency is changing the rate. Now this is really good for percussive sounds because I can actually go over to the envelope area of this B oscillator and I can change the envelope. So just like before with the frequency, I can change it so it has a, it goes all the way down, the sustain is negative infinity and it has a really short decay. So you can hear it, it's, only, it's very quickly kind of applying that at the start of each time I play a note. Let's take it off fixed mode and use course again. That's just two sine waves, except one is frequency modulating the, the other one. This is, this is a really good way of um, artificially creating kind of guitar sounds and stuff. So. So that's cool, but we don't have to use a sine wave, we can use any kind of waves we want. So let's go back to course one, so this, how it's frequency modulating at the same rate. Let's choose a saw wave and see what happens. Make sure the envelope is up. We can have a tack on the envelope instead. Let's try a square wave. We can even use noise if we want. It's not that good. I'm going to go back to a sine wave there. Let's keep it at there for now. Now we can frequency modulate the frequency of this one, which remember is frequency modulating this one. So let's see what happens when I do that. We'll give that uh, an envelope with a really short decay. And we can also frequency modulate this one. Let's make this one fixed and make it higher. I'm just going to bring these down for a sec. Now, what I found really cool is there is a 4-bit and an 8-bit sine wave option in, um, in, the, in the wave selection of the oscillators here. Um, I find these are really good to modulate single sine waves to get some really good crunching sounds. So let's have a listen. Let's try the 4-bit one. I'm going to go down an octave. Very good. Now let's get rid of that spectrum and let's just play this what we've got here. Let's see what happens if I take the course value down to 0.5. So this is playing half. This is frequency modulating a sine wave with an eight with a four-bit sine wave 
that is half the frequency of what the original pitch is. Sounds awesome. But it's quite low, so this is where I'm going to use this technique that I was talking about. I'm going to select all the notes, shift it up an octave. Let's shift it up another octave. Now we've got that oscillator B level, which is here. Which is quite, which is the fun parameter to play with in this, in this um, particular synth, synthesized patch that we're making. Um, you'll notice as I move the knob we have a line that corresponds here. I can move the line up and down and the value will, will move up and down. I've created a point there by accident. Um, so we can actually automate this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna automate this. I'm gonna go into my draw tool by pushing B and let's have because it's kind of got that one, two, three, four, five thing, I'm gonna have it go open up. Each 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 one of those notes is going to kind of open up. So I've just drawn in some notes here with my, my pen tool where I want it to open. My draw tool, sorry. I'm going to push B again to go off there. I'm going to create, actually let's just go back to B so I can create a point here, point here, point here, point here. So at the moment it's going to go not bad but if I click on this point it removes it so let's that kind of smooths it out so it's almost like I'm giving giving it its own attack and I'm gonna bring these over but actually what I'm gonna do is click the plus symbol here to give that oscillator B its own automation lane and let's just bring that across like that and that means I can select that now and command D and duplicate it across Let's zoom in a bit. I'm going to change the size of my grid by holding the command and pushing 1. And that means we can go into our draw tool again. And let's put in some really weird notes here. Let's kind of like move them around quite erratically. See what happens when I do this. And then here, let's have one big swoop up and down. So I'm just clicking to add points here. <laughs> And then let's duplicate all that across as well to, to complete the phrase. Right, let's see what happens if I start bringing in the level of the C one here. So that C1 sounds good, I'm going to give it its own automation lane here as well. That sounds good over these notes I think. So what I'm going to do is bring up C just for these notes. That should do. And of course we want to duplicate that across. That's kind of cool. Let's make a, make a slope there. And a slope there. Let's see what happens if I bring the level up of this one. Excellent. Now we can turn on the filter if we like. Give it some reason. But I don't like that filter very much. Let's add our own. So I'm going to put an auto filter after the operator here. And of course, as we move the frequency or the cutoff of this auto filter, we get a line here. So I'm going to keep it completely open. And where there was that sharp. It was kind of here, so I'm going to give that its own auto, um, its own automation lane. Let's see what happens if I open that up. And we'll duplicate that one across as well. I'm 
actually going to move this note up an octave to see what, what that sounds like. What I could do is I can go into the envelopes area here, make sure it's on MIDI control, and I can use pitch bend. So where are we? Pitch bend here, and let's have that last note have a pitch bend going down. That could be cool. Now another thing I like to do with these kind of sounds is add a redux. So a redux kind of crushes and distorts it, down samples it. Um, by default it's set to hard mode on the down sample, I just use the soft mode, it's a bit less intrusive. And I'm going to uh, extend the size of the grid here by pushing command 2, oops, command 2, and go back to my draw tool by pushing B, and then let's give, let's just make sure there's no down sampling at all. But let's just give every second note a little bit more of a down sample. See how that sounds. And let's have a down sample sweep there, see how that sounds. I might use the spread function here of operator, which kind of splits the uh, splits everything to the left and the right, and uh, kind of like a chorus. Now remember, we are working with the bass line here, but once I have actually resampled this, we'll use the same MIDI track and sorry MIDI clip and put it on its separate sub bass, so we have a nice clean sine single mono wave because that's what we want for the real sub. I wonder what would happen if we put a phaser over it. Maybe a flanger would be better. Whoops. I'm taking the amount of the LFO down because we don't want any of that. Mm, I like the phaser better, to be honest. Or maybe a chorus would work. Similar kind of stuff. No, phaser definitely was the winner. So I'm going to select that frequency, give it its own modulation lane, and let's just give it different frequency values for each of those notes. We have to lower our grid size, command 1, to make sure that these guys are all kind of the same. doesn't really matter. I mean, you might make a mistake and it sounds awesome. And we'll go to here. Maybe make these ones a bit different. Let's give it eight poles, the phaser. I'm going to put the phaser before the redux. Okay, so now let's let's try this resampling thing I was talking about. So I'm going to create a new audio track, and we'll call this. Oops, was a cool sound. Uh, we'll call this bass RS for resampled. Now we've got our ins and outs menu here. Um, this is saying where do you want the audio to come from? Where do you want the audio to go to? If it's not there, you need to click on this little I O down here. Um, so the audio is coming from it. We don't need to worry about external in. The master is where we want it to go, but what we want is we want to change this external in to bass. So that means it's now taking the bass, it's now taking the input from this bass channel. And that means we just simply need to hit record on the track, go back to the start, hit record here. <laughs> Yeah. 
stop it. Now it's kind of looped itself and started recording again. You can just Command Z that so you get a nice whole loop. I'm going to solo it. And let's open it up. So now I have an audio sample of the uh, bass line that we synthesized. The bass line's still there, but we don't need it for now. Um, so first thing, it's in beats mode. So remember, Ableton Life has different ways of stretching samples. Whether you want to make something longer or shorter, or whether you want to change the pitch of something but retain the, the length, it has to do different things to actually um, to actually achieve that result. I mean, I mean, I mean, the classic way is is, is repitching. So if I wanted to repitch this, so if, um, for example, if I slowed down this whole track to say 120, if I wanted to speed it up, you'll see how it will repitch it in order to into, to retain the uh, the actual length. Like a, like a vinyl record, or, or a CDJ. But we can choose different algorithms here, we can choose beats. Now beats is used for drums, what it does is it looks for transients, which are individual hits, so sharp spikes in the waveform. So you can see this is where it's picked up transients here, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. And um, in beats mode what it will do is it will look for those transients and it will try to maintain the sound between each transient but then stretch it out or do something differently for example this um forward and back arrow here what that means is once the train if you if i stretch this out to double the time it's going to play this transient out and then when it reaches the end it's going to start playing it backwards to make up for the gap where the stretch has, has created a, a particular type of gap so beats mode isn't the best for this but let's try it anyway and i'm going to bring the transpose down negative 12, which is an octave, so 12 semitones down. Not bad, we can change it from transients to say 16th notes, so every 16th note it will just chop, chop it up and try and make up for that gap by reversing it. Let's see what happens if I do quarter of the bar. Let's just put a limiter over it to bring it up. This is bad practice, but... Uh, where did all this stuff come from? That's very weird indeed. I don't remember adding a chorus, a compressor, a corpus, a dynamic tube, or an EQ8, or an EQ3. Huh. Please comment if you can figure that one out. Anyway. Okay, so that's alright, but beats isn't probably what we want. Let's try tones mode. Mm, it's alright. Texture mode. Uh, complex is usually the best one I've found. Let's bring it down two octaves, see what happens. Let's try complex promo, complex promo. It's pretty dark. What I'm going to do is create a new MIDI track here and call it Sub Bass. And we'll drag our MIDI clip down here and we'll give it an operator. Just so we have a nice uh, sine wave tone, I'm going to bring it down to octaves. 
And what I do with most, most of my sub bases is I frequency modulate it again with another sine, uh, another sine wave, but I have the course down at 0.5 and I just give it a little bit of level because it gives it a bit more of a grunt. So that's without it. Hopefully you've got um, headphones on or some good monitors. And I also give it a pitch envelope. So remember we had a filter envelope, we had an amplitude envelope, we also have a pitch envelope. So this alters the pitch of every single note. So if I bring this up, bring the decay time down a bit, bring the peak up a bit, every single note is going to have a bit of a punch to the start of it. So the pitch is going to start a little bit higher than it should, but very quickly come down to where it's, where it's meant to be. If I bring the decay out, you'll really be able to hear that. peek down a bit what you can also do is you can go to your level you can bring your sustain down a little bit and then bring your volume up so just that just means the start of each note has a bit of a kick now if we go back to our base our resample base here um, I'm going to add an audio effect I'm going to add an EQ8 we'll put it uh, for the limiter. Now I'm doing this because I want to get rid of all the sub, all the low end of this because this sub base is now taken over as being the uh, the sub. So I'm going to turn this into a low shelf, bring it up, I don't know, around 100 hertz maybe, I don't know, you can change it here if you like, maybe 150. Let's have a listen. And let's bring in the sub with that. So I'm going to bring this back up, up an octave again, this is the resample thing. Not bad, now let's add a reverb over it. And I'm going to give it a really short size, a really short decay, dry, wet, Mm, pretty pretty low. Remember the size and decay are basically how big the room is, how big the reverberation is, how long it lasts for, and dry wet is how much of that is actually applied. So if I have none, it's completely dry. But if I bring it up, you turn it into high quality mode. And you also notice the input processing, it has a high cut on by default. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to put a low cut on by default. We don't really need to because we're cutting the lows here, but eh, yeah, might as well. Let's give it a bit more of a decay time. Now here's something I just thought of just then. Um, what if we put a gate over it? Now a gate, what a gate does is it only lets through, it only plays sound that is over a certain threshold or a volume level. Um, so yeah, in the words of uh, another fantastic certified trainer and friend of mine, Adam Mags, he cracked me up. He said, "You must be tall enough to go on this ride." So if I put a gate over it gonna solo it. Bring the threshold down or up. Now check out what I'm gonna do here. So I've Got, just got the tips of the high, highest, loudest points of this bass line. Then I've given it a reverb. I'm going to actually reverse this now. I'm going to reverse the whole thing. So this is completely out of whack. It's going to sound very strange. Let's listen to it without the gate first. Let's put the gate back on. So now it's reversed and it's only taking the highest volume hits and stabs of that bass line and it's giving it a reverb. So what I'm going to do is record that and then I'm going to reverse it back, which means we're going to get these weird suck up 
pre-reverbs only to the highest points. Now, I, this is, I don't know if this is going to work, but I think it might be quite cool. So what I need to do is I need to turn my looping off because I know there's going to be a bit of a reverberation tail here. So I'm actually going to let it play till he until here. So let's just record this one. So remember I took the, um, I'm taking the um, input of the audio of this audio track here. Um, we'll call this uh, bass reverse. And hit record to see what happens. Boom, there. Now I'm just going to make sure that, that that is exactly that that long. And the reason I'm making sure it's exactly that long is now I can reverse this by hitting reverse, and I need to drag it back to here. I'm also going to take this, and I'm going to reverse it back to how it was originally. Now let's see what we get with this. So I'm going to turn the gate off and the reverb off. And make sure we solo it. Let's see what happens if I transpose this up an octave. And we'll choose complex mode again, turn off loop. And let's listen to it all together. Now I'm going to group these three baseline things together as one group. By I selected all of those, sorry, by holding down the shift key, I right click and I go group. Or command G is the shortcut, and we'll name this base G for base group. The reason I do that is now we can add a compressor. And we're going to sidechain, so a compressor um, compresses the sound, it, it crunches it together, it, it squishes it up, but I want it to sidechain, which means I only want that to happen when the audio comes from the drums, and I'm going to turn an EQ on, and I'm going to make it a bandpass EQ, and I'm going to change the frequency down, so that means I'm effectively just isolating the kick because this is a mixed loop it's got a, a hi-hats it's got a snares it's got a kick drum i just want it to come from a kick so let's play this and listen i can bring the resonance up of this band pass it's unfortunate that you can't actually see a graph of it um but uh by bringing the cue up it's making the, the band pass thinner and taller So that's what we want. If I turn the EQ off, we get everything happening here. If I turn it on, we're getting a little bit of the snare, I think, but the, oh, that doesn't matter. And I'm going to bring the threshold down. So the threshold means that when this um, kick drum goes over with this point that I define, then it starts crunching it by a ratio of 2 to 1. And we should get a kind of a pumping effect. <laughs> We could actually make this a bit more powerful, so I'm just creating a MIDI track, I'm calling it Kick. I'm going to type in Kick, I'm going to go into all my samples, look at all these samples, let's find one. There's a good one. Drag it down. It creates a simpler for us. Or is this note? This is a sampler. And there's our kick drum. So now I can go in here, create a new MIDI clip. Like this. Command Shift M, that was. So I'm going to copy where those kicks are. You get fast at this as you, as you, as you get, if, as you do it more often, trust me. And now we can go into our drums and we can use a EQ8 
and get rid of again get rid of the the kick essentially from it so let's listen here bring the kick here while we're at it let's give it a snare as well we're writing a tune this is fun Oops, that was an audio track. We don't want that. We want that one there, which is a snare. Let's find a nice punchy snare. I'm sure I've got one hiding somewhere in here. Look at all those snares. Not very good. How about that? Why not that? That's a bit of a weird one, but that could do. So I'm just going to create a mini clip here. It doesn't have to be long because the snare is only going to be on the two and the four. One and on the four. And remember, we need to change the side chain to that kick that we got. I'm looking at the EQ now because that kick channel only has a kick drum on it. I want a different snare. What about that one? And now let's just do some fun editing. I'm going to leave the tutorial here, um, but I'm going to just do some e quick editing and mucking around with all this shit here using cutting and pacing and pitch shifting and stuff. Um, but I'll leave it there because I've taught for enough. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. My name's Tom Cosm. Cosm.co.nz. you got to say it right, Tom. And uh, there's lots of other free stuff there, tutorials and all kinds of stuff. Cool.